Greetings and salutations. This is Imperator Vespasian and his trusty sidekick. Hello. We're bringing you a new box that we've got today, which is Vitrix Greek Unarmored Hoplites and Archers. Um, right, you see, we've already done the um, skirmish troops for the Greeks, haven't we? Like years ago. Yes. Um, which we, we actually use the figures for our Jewish revolt. And it would appear that the same bowmen you get in that box, you get in this box as well. So if you got both boxes, you'd get a huge amount of bowmen. Just throwing that out there. Um, the concept of unarmored Greek hoplites is an interesting one. Generally, the hoplites did wear armor. There were a few occasions where, notably the Spartans, took their armour off so they could chase down um, Peltas troops that were attacking them because uh, they, they had a problem that they were too heavily armoured and the Peltases would go and attack them and throw stones at them, uh, throw javelins and stuff at them and the Spartans wouldn't be able to chase them and so the Spartans took their armour off and uh, were able to chase them down so that, that's an interesting Thing. Although generally, um, Greeks would have had full body armour. Um, but there were a few occasions when they didn't. Um, yeah, I'm just throwing that, throwing that out there. And the hair's been cut in this one. Uh, yeah, probably because these aren't supposed to be Spartans. Get in the box. I can't get in the box. Yes. The car boys should be really easy. I know it's, it's difficult. I have difficulty with doors as well. Alright, let me get these chaps out. Just put it down here and get a good look at them. Right, these are the bowmen. Um, first off, they're more or less the same as the other bowmen that you get. We've already done a video on. You get a nice little hat or a head, uh, sorry, a, a bare head uh, to round the bows with. You've got one guy priming an arrow ready to fire, and another guy actually firing. Um, not really much you can say about bowmen, is there? No, not really. They're a bit boring, aren't they? Right, we'll just skip that then. Right, straight on to the actual hoplites themselves. These poses that these hoplites are in are the kind of poses I would have preferred the other boxes to be. Um, you get quite a few different poses, and you can actually form, if you're basing on a large base, you can actually form a phalanx with these figures. Whereas you can't really do that with the, it doesn't look as good when you do it with the, the normal figures you get, the ones in lamellar armour. Because they're, they're all sort of walking or moving forwards, they're not doing these a little bit more exaggerated poses, particularly this chap. Um, helmet wise, you have a wide variety of helmets to choose from. You have the open helmet, which is just a, a bit of headgear. And then you have the Corinthian helmets, different versions of Corinthian helmets. So you can use these for more or less any of the Greek city-states. Um, I think it would have been more useful to have more bareheaded troops or more open helmets. But you can get those by mixing the boxes up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right, so spear, you get the same standard spear that the Greeks used, they are supposed to be hoplites after all, and you get the standard hoplite shield. And again, um, you get the brilliant detail on the inside of the hoplite shield, which I quite like with these figures. But this seems to be becoming a regular thing now. Um, it, there once was a time, I am that old, when the backs of shields used to be just blank, or maybe have a little line on it that you can stick the, the hand to, and nowadays Everything is really detailed on these figures, so that's cool. They're not actually armoured at all. Generally, um, hoplites, even if they were unarmoured, and anyway, if, if they were not wearing armour, um, they would have had um, leg braces, uh, leg greaves, to protect their feet. Uh, sorry, to protect the, the lower part of their legs, which is the bit that's showing underneath the shield. I mean, you can stand behind one of these hoplon shields, which are huge, and more or less protect your entire body, but you can't protect your feet, uh, your lower legs. And so, 
they would still have worn some sort of armor on their legs. But hey, I'm not. I'm not. I didn't design the box. Um, some troops are barefooted and some troops are wearing sandals. It's the same with the hoplite box as well. That some are barefoot and some aren't. Until studs were invented um, for the bottom of sandals, they were probably it was much easier to actually fight on foot and not wear sandals, fight barefoot, because it gave you a better grip on the ground. That's an interesting thing. Who invented the studs for sandals for shoes? The the grip. A man calls studs. Well, normally do. No, it was, it was the Romans. It was uh, time of Marius. Um, but I think some units did actually wear them before. They do pop up occasionally in archaeological archeolo digs. Um, but when the Roman army was standardised, everyone got studs on the bottom of their sandals. Which was useful, because it enabled you to grip better. Um, that's really all I can say about the figures. Um, they are the same figures that you get in the skirmishing box. The only difference is, is this shield. Is the hoplon shield, and in the skirmish box, you get the, the peltasus box. You you don't get these shields. You get the sort of half moon shield with the sort of hole cut out, um, which is what the peltasus used. Skirmishes. Yeah. So that is the only real difference with this. Um, they're clearly armed to be hoplites. Apart from the bowmen. Well, apart from the bowmen, yeah. Um, I'm not really sure why the bowmen are in it, given that you get. You get the bowman with the um, peltus box. So it seems strange to include the bowman in with the light infantry. But I suppose it's because most people won't use a huge amount of unarmored infantry. Most people will be using hoplites. I don't know, it's a weird one. Um, I'm going to be using these for um, Spartan helots and for carrion. Um, Lykee, what are they called? Um, the the carrion version of helots, uh, which were sort of an underclass of people who uh, sort of uh, slaves, really, more than anything. Um, for the Spartans, they were sort of a subclass of people who lived in Sparta, and although they were the only ones allowed to own property, um, and in Caria, they were the indigenous population before the Carian Greeks arrived and conquered Caria. Um, and and they, they were very much like helots were to the Spartans. So that's, that's what I'm going to be using these for. Anyway, over to you for questions. In what wars did they not use armour? Um, really, the Peloponnesian War was, was the only real time that we know that the Greeks didn't wear armour. Uh, not the Greeks, the, the, the Spartans in particular took their armour off in order to take on the Athenians because the Athenians had a huge amount of peltasses because the Athenians knew they couldn't beat the Spartans in combat so they instead got a huge amount of soldiers who had no armour and a very small shield but they threw javelins, they fired bows, they threw slings, fired slings and the Spartans found that really hard to cope with because the Spartans were heavy infantry and that's mainly the bit where that happened. Um, although I am going to be using them as helots, I think for the most part Sparta was a professional army. I would assume even the helots would have been given half decent armour. Yeah. Remember the Spartans wanted to win battles. Um, it's remarkably silly to think that, oh well, these people were considered by the Spartans just to be peasants. Well, in peasant armies you armed the peasants because you needed your peasants to fight. Um, and most of the time peasants didn't fight anyway. Uh, most of that's fiction. Um, because peasants, they're who pay your wages. You've done about this in school, haven't you? Recently? You need a few exams? No, you talk, you talk about it. No, but you, you're doing it the system, the triangle. Oh yeah, the triangle, uh, society triangle. Yeah, the society triangle. And there's beef in England. Yeah, and if you send away the people at the bottom of the triangle to fight, and they get killed... You don't get any workers, so you don't get any money. Yeah, because the lords didn't make money, they taxed people for money. 
And if you kill the people taxing, then... Pay screwed. Yeah. So, um, I, I would assume that even the helots would have had... Maybe not lamellar, but certainly some form of arm, maybe some scale arm or something like that. Um, which would have protected them. And it would probably have been passed down through generations. Um, you would probably always have bits of armour knocking around your house, you wouldn't throw away because it started out quite expensive. Um, and also, given that helots in general would be um, under the... normally would be under the control of a single Spartan family. So the helots who owned the farms and ran the farms and ran the local blacksmiths and, and did all that stuff would be under one Spartan who owned the land. Who was in charge of the land? He was gifted the land by the state, so um, those would technically be his slaves, and he could call upon those men to go and fight. Uh, if not for Mopoli, there would have probably been about two, ta two to three times as many helots as they were Spartans. But again, you don't want to get them killed because you need them because they're 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 the the basis of your civilization. It'd yeah. be silly to do otherwise. Uh, mostly they would be used to fetch and carry, really. They wouldn't really have been doing much fighting, but when you're doing things like fight the Persians, every man who can carry a weapon is basically on the front line, because you, the Persians are about to wipe you off the face of the planet. They, they burnt Athens, they would have burnt Sparta, given half the chance if there was anything worth burning. Not that there was. <laughs> Spartans didn't really go in for building much. But, yeah, so, no, it swings and roundabouts. But the figures are there, you can you can buy them, you can base them up and do, do what you want with them, regardless of how historically accurate it is. Um, I think some vases have, um, vases, um, pottery, have sort of pictures of troops who may be helots, and they have a metal breastplate just here. Which is very archaic. Back in the old days, people used to wear that. Um, but even the Roman citizen infantry wore a small breastplate across the chest as well. They also had leg greaves. Um, so it was still around by Roman times. And this dates back, this sort of thing dates back to, oh, I'm trying to think, um, early. The Assyrians, I think, I think the very early Assyrians um, actually wore that sort of armour. They had just had a bit of metal strapped to the front of their chest um, to guard against arrows and stuff. So, yeah, it's it's all technology to the Greeks. Um, more questions? Last question. Oh, last question. Go on then. Did they, have it, did they not wear any uniform? <sighs> the Spartans certainly wore uniform. But the unarmoured hoplites, did they not have any... They would have been... Look, there's no historical evidence to back that the helots were given a uniform per se, or anything that had uniformity to it. Even the, Athen the Athenians, and, and the, which was the biggest army after the Spartans, didn't have an actual set. Everyone has this helmet, like the Romans. Like, everyone has this helmet, everyone has this shield. They all had a hoplon, which is the nearest you can get to a uniform. They all had the same length spear, which was an eight-foot spear. Um, and they will all have some form of helmet, but it would really be up to the individual as to how he preferred to fight. If he wanted an open-faced helmet, he'd wear one. If he wanted a, an enclosed helmet, um, like, their, their, their helmet's more like the Spartan helmet. These are, these are the sort of helmets that the Athenians wore. And um, the Corinthians and the Thespians, they, they wore this sort of helmet. Then you've got that, that's the Corinthian helmet. That would have been worn by the Spartans and by the um, Athenians. Uh, what else was it? Wore it. Uh, actually, didn't the Thespians wear, these, wear the Corinthian mainly? No, the film or anything. No, not in the film they don't. Mm. In the film they're just wearing a bit of leather. And in fact, they're more armoured than the Greeks in the film, than, than the Athenians. The Athenians in the film just wear a cloak. Whereas the, at least the Thespians turn up armed. <laughs> but, um, 
Yeah, this helmet here, that's more the Seaburn helmet, and then these are Spartan, sort of mid-period Spartan type helmet, which is the sort of upside down bucket helmet, usually with a bit of guard on the sides of the face. And that was used by the Spartans during the Peloponnesian War. Um, it, it caught, sort of came in fashion for a short amount of time and then went out again. Um, but for some reason the Spartan box only has those helmets. It doesn't give you the choice to change the period. So these Corinthian helmets will be going to my Spartans. And my Spartan helmets will be going to these. So I'll just be swapping the heads, basically. Um, sorry, what was the question again? Did I, did I answer the question then? Yeah, you said that the, the closest they got to uniform was the helmet was the same. Well, the helmet was the same if they choose, chose that. Yeah, but the, the shield that's the, point. the shield's yeah. the same and the spears are the same. Yeah, but the shield design was the same, the decoration of the helmet and even the type of the helmet would be different, although they would wear a helmet. Um, some would have plumes. It really came down to how much you could afford. Um, not so much with the Spartans. Uh, the Spartans would just go to their local smith and say, I want a helmet that looks like this, and he'd make it. Whereas the Athenians, um, if they were really rich, they would have all these feathers and stuff on top of their helmet, the horse hair, and, and they used to have feathers sticking out if, if they thought they were important. And they would stomp around looking really impressive with all their really ornate armour and stuff. But they were no different from a normal, any other normal hoplite. Um, how much do you want to spend on your armour? Not much, because they're just normal hospitals. Yeah. Not the men. Yeah, they're not professional soldiers. Um, so their, their armour would just really be to look good. And the shield designs were individual, so you painted anything you wanted on your shield. Some would paint pictures of gods or pictures of animals. I don't know, there's obviously a reason for painting it. Maybe a pig had uh, drew a pig on his shield. I don't know. Or a chicken. I'd hate to think what a gynaecologist would have drawn. There's a chicken there, a ball. Yeah, there's a chicken, yeah. Uh, a horse, oh, that's a unicorn there. Yeah, so they could wear anything. The, um, a huge all-seeing eye was quite popular. That was quite interesting. Sort of, I got my eye on you sort of thing. Um, and also, um, like with the Athenians, they wore anything. That They used anything as a shield design. Uh, the Spartans began to use the um, upside-down V, uh, the L for Laconia. The Greek Greek hell. Um, uh, Carrions used sea animals, so crabs and lobsters and and squid and fish. And, Cthulhu. Uh, Cthulhu. Yeah, they probably drew Cthulhu on their shield. Yeah, um, but it was really up to the um, the individual. Uh, as time went on, it became more common, especially after the Spartans got into it to simply write the letter on your shield of your country. So theoretically the Athenians would have an A written on their shield. But not a lot of them, because the Athenians are remarkably individualistic. And, and, and I think one of the reasons the, the Athenians never actually designed a uniform was because they could never agree on one. They just end up shouting at each other and, and, and yeah, they just argue with each other all the time because they wouldn't like this particular shade of blue or whatever. Uh, for my own army, I'm actually painting all the Athenians with blue cloth, but all the shields and everything is individual and different. The helmets are all different, but I'm just giving them all blue blue cloth um, to wear to make it easier to identify when you're having a big battle. Um, yeah. Not historically accurate. The Athenians wore anything they wanted to wear. It was up to them. Uh, Spartans all wore red. That's well documented. Um, so all Spartans would be in red. I would assume so would the Helots. Although I don't really see the Spartan state issuing cloaks to Helots. And certainly the Helots would have worn their own clothing. But I'm not... I would assume they would have worn the same colours as the Spartans, probably because that was the dye that was most common in Sparta, which is why they used it. So I would assume they would have lots of spare dye to dye clothing with. I don't know, we don't know because we weren't there. Yeah. We can only guess at a lot of things. Um, but we can. we know how human nature works. And Sparta was a professional army. Uh, Thebes had a semi-professional army. 
so they would have worn they, they did wear matching helmets and things like that the Thebans generally um, the Thespians weren't really a sort of standing army but they did have a a very very strong sort of military cult if you get what I mean yeah. so th they would probably have really gone in for expensive gear um, and also the Thespians had a tendency to fight to the death um, the Corinthians they were on the border between Athens and Sparta so I would assume they would have to have had some form of standing army because you had two the two sides were constantly fighting each other so having a border guard would probably be a useful thing to have um, but again um, how many men? Um, probably not that many. There weren't a huge amount of people in Greece at the time. So, yeah. That was your second question. Was that the last question? Yeah. Right. Um, I will be having these painted up soon. Keep a lookout for them. Um, we'll be doing some videos. I've already painted a few things up. I've also got some Persians, which you should like when I get around to showing them. And that's really it. So if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe and comment down below what you think of the Greek unarmed hoplites. Hooray! Sparta! Yeah. No, the hoplites. Well, Spartans are hoplites. Yeah, but Spartans are actually trained hoplites. I have a pipe, fair comment. Yeah. And they had um... Not in the film. Yeah. That means we've been slaughtered. Good point. Yeah. Right. right, we're off then. Thank you very much for watching. What he said. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from him. Goodbye. Bye.